so in case this thing doesn't have an opening, uh, found out my radiator was leaking. Tried to fix it and uh, made it uh, probably a lot worse. So yeah, needless to say, if you want a video on uh, seeing how not to braze a aluminum radiator back together, then hey, I'll have a video on that. So here's our leak spot. It was leaking over here uh, where the fin met the side tank. It was real small. So it only ever, you know, steamed a little bit when it got over, you know, let's say 206, something like that, it would start to steam a little. So I tried to braze it back together with like aluminum brazing rod. And uh, I finally got the uh, the radiator part to cover, but um, the tubes are so thin you just burn right through it with map gas. So it, kept, it, it, it would literally burn through the tube as you're trying to put the stuff on there. It doesn't wick on there like I thought it was. It doesn't like wet and... Maybe it needed more flux or something, but it just wasn't, it didn't do what I wanted, you know? It just, it just kind of sits on there. It doesn't really, you know, get in there. So, oh well. Probably would have better luck with JB Weld, honestly, but I figured this was the more professional way to go. Look where that got me. So, I guess it's time to nut up or shut up. Get what you pay for. It was eBay. Lasted a year and a half. Was honestly, more than I thought it was going to last. So, my buddy told me to get a Mishimoto. So we're if this one leaks, I'm going to beat him over the head with it. It was $400 compared to $100. Four times the price. Is it four times as nice? I don't know. As long as it lasts, it's a lifetime warranty. So, uh, yeah. I'd really like to hold him to it. Because <laughs> uh, for what I'm paying, it'd be nice to <laughs> get two of them out of these if uh, this thing ever leaks. But again, the goal is for this to never leak. Oh, looks like the box is about ready to open up. <laughs> also very hard to find these. Quadratech, not in stock. Morris 4x4, not in stock. Amazon, a few in stock. Beautiful. Well, for what you're paying, at least they give you some nice packaging to look at so you can you know, have something to wipe your tears with. Oh, and stickers, too, so you can show other people how much you paid. Oh, well, there it is. Oh. And it's aluminum, so that'll bend. All right, come out. Out, you fucker. All right. Shiny. Upper hose. Oh, well, polished. Beautiful. Comes with radiator cap. Cool. This has the uh, the port, so if you guys have the temp senders, which is definitely good for the Renix guys, you have that. Looks like we got a lower fitting, we got an upper fitting, and what I couldn't tell from the pictures is if they were welded in place. And yeah, it looks like those fittings are welded. This top one definitely is. Uh, I can't tell. That one looks like it was screwed in, so that's good. We could take that off if we needed to. Oh boy, because I think mine has different fittings. That's the part I was worried about. Extra brackets for the condenser. Lovely. Oh, another little... What the hell are those? Oh! They give you a uh, block-off port if you have a closed system. Neat. Okay. That's kind of cool. Otherwise you thread that guy on there. Good to know. Well, it looks nice, but I'm not sure what I'm going to do about that trans cooler part. Luckily I have an external, so if I really needed to I could just go through that, but then it doesn't warm up in the uh, winter. Hmm. Very shiny indeed. So down here, we have our uh, our drain, the petcock over here. It's actually, it looks like solid metal with a nice, nice uh, spacer in there. So no rubber business to go bad, because that was something that I have an issue on that. It's plastic, and the, uh, the rubber seal uh, was cracked, so I had to replace that. But yeah, it's thick. Actually, it looks like it's thicker than that one, really. At least the side tanks are thicker anyway. So that's cool. Oh wow, this is one of the few that actually has the, the label, you know, painted on there. You see all the, that on images all the time is the logo painted on there, but this one actually has it. Neat. There's the side tank design. A lot, lot bigger, thicker than if we were to compare it to this. It's 
it's really just just kind of square. So I wonder if the bigger side tanks help. They claim something like 90% better cooling or cooling capacity or something like that. I mean, compared to the stock one, yeah, these aluminum ones are killer, dude. So, all right. Not bad. For the price, it's it, it looks good. It does look good. So that's helpful. So as long as we can figure out how to jerry-rig up that uh, upper trans line hose, she should swap right in. Okay, so let's get this party started. So, uh... We're gonna have to drain the radiator. I'm probably gonna pull the uh, lower radiator hose, remove the fans, I have to take off this uh, upper shroud thingy, and then we can remove the radiator. So, let's get started. Okay, so I got the fans removed, I got the uh, that line removed, it's just a bunch of screws up here, Phillips head, and you can pull it out. And this little Volvo fan doesn't like coming out too well. So next we're gonna take off this top brace. So we got a bolt here. Usually you have like star bolts here, and you have a really annoying one there. I uh, never put that one back because they're really annoying to take off, but maybe it'll look a little something like that. Take these off, take that off. Um, also, you'll have these bolts and those if your header panel's like together or not together or whatever. I know that this is the only stud remaining. <coughs> so I just got to take these bolts off, pull it, and then it'll come off. So then we can see our problem shot a little better. Okay, so now that little uh, member thingy's off, maybe we can get a wonderful look at the radiator. Ah, uh, yeah, I forgot how wide this thing was. We're gonna have to take it out. So that means upper red hose, lower red hose, both trans cooler lines. Oh, kill me. I hate those trans cooler lines so much. Uh. <laughs> okay, so now it's time for the drain part of the situation. I can't get the lower red ho hose off because my sensor's in the way, so pull this first. Just try to catch as much as it you possibly can. There you go. Okay, so we'll let that drain, and we'll see if we can get that uh, lower rad hose off, and continue. Then we can do the transmission cooler lines and get this bastard out. Okay, so after you've thoroughly uh, cursed at every single hose connection to try to get the friggin' thing off, I think we can uh, pull the damn thing. Upper hose, lower hose, both trans cooler hoses. Now, since I have a Ox trans cooler mine was a little easier to get to because I didn't have to mess with the quick connect settings, but all right, now I guess we uh, lift the radiator up. Okay, so here we are with wonderful Mijimoto. Um, okay, so the things that we've figured out is that this port up here is welded in, so that's really obnoxious. I wish they didn't do that so I could unscrew it because my old one looks like that. It's smaller and well, female instead of male. So we're going to try to make a custom adapter for that. If not, we'll have to just buy a hose barb. Uh, second off, this lower port. This part sticks out just a little bit more than my old one, which was copper. So when we go to take our quick connect fitting and slide it on there and we push it on all the way, that's fully seated, comes right back off again. It's not, it can't seat far enough to actually hold. I tried taking the plastic off and pushing it so it's in the lock position, but then it wouldn't go all the way in. So this freaking thing's a little longer. So, we've got two options. Either use a hose cutter to try to nibble that off and make sure it's not sharp and eats up the O-rings. Or we just swap the old one on. <sighs> okay, another fitment check is the fans. Now I got a custom two-speed Volvo fan which as you can see sticks down a lot farther, but I made a shroud so that it actually seals. Did you say seal? Or, or. So the stock one over here has got a little bit of a gap, but I guess that's factory. Because with this eBay one that I bought, the holes are all the way out here, and they were contacting the pulleys, so I had to cut a new one. That was a pain in the butt, drilling that and trying to get a little grinder in there. What a pain. You see how crappy that looks. <laughs> Okay, well, I think everything checks out, so uh, I guess just figure out what to do with that fitting, and uh, we'll drop it in. We're going to crank down this guy because we're not going to use the sensor because I got a fan controller. If you guys want fan controllers, huh? check out that video. Super customizable Arduino. This guy over here is neat. Nice little uh, metal drain plug. Unlike this plastic thing, which is a real pain in the ass to get to. So that might be nice if you can get a wrench on there because it's, it's such a hard spot to get to. So that's cool. 
Let's just nibble a little off there. If you've ever seen one of these little circular pipe cutters before. Really nifty, give her a spin, crank it a little. I think my dad said this was for stainless steel or something like that. Oh, there's a difference between them. Mm -hmm. But anyway, just keep doing that until she uh, comes off. Then we'll clean it up with a file. Beautiful. So did you know that this end of the file can be used for holes? Really good deburring. Beautiful. Nice. Keep your holes clean, boys. And girls. Okay, so now with a little bit of fiddling, the fitting actually stays on there. Yay! Okay. Transmission line is not going to blow off. At least lower on anyway. Also, we have the option to put in a port or a, uh, a block off screw. So since we have the open style, we're going to put in the uh, the port. You know, wherever the heck it got to. So we'll screw that in there. We're going to stop dicking around and actually put this in the vehicle. Tell you what, that's a nice fit. That's what I look for. Okay, so over here, the first thing you're going to have to do is uh, make sure the drain plug goes underneath the... Um, your AC lines first, so you're going to angle it down a little bit that way, and then you can drop that down. Can't go too far on this, you got to keep it mostly parallel, or the uh, lower rad connector isn't going to pass by. But yeah, she just slowly, you know, drops into place. These thicker side tanks still fit really well. Nice work. So once you get it to drop most of the way down, you're going to want to come underneath. Make sure that your pegs line up. That one, and that one, and you're good to go. Cool. All right, radiator is in place. So now you can uh, connect your condenser to your rad if need be. It comes with brackets, but not hardware. So yeah, on the other version, there was just a little tab sticking out and I just used zip ties. Worked really well, honestly. So we'll have to figure out something to do with that, but we'll get our connections in, and then we can drop our fans in. Well, got to put the upper support back on, but you know. Actually, if you look, you can see that this side is higher than that other side. I was trying to figure out what was holding it up. So that is the lower hose, because this thing keeps getting in the freaking way, but notice we have contact on that uh, that cooler line. I had the same issue with the uh, the copper one. Uh, with the old rad, but I was just able to bend it a little bit. Just put a little dent in there See a little dent so it could fit next to the other uh, frame huh. Okay I do remember reading stuff about this when other people were trying to swap in rads So basically what you can do is just take out a little tiny chunk over there if you want Ah crap all right, so it's not a direct fit. It's just a really close fit. Huh, so if you come down here, you can actually see our problem area. You can see this little part over here seems to be in the way. I think I might cut uh, two little slots in it and just hammer it down a little bit. That should be easy enough. Okay, so take your sawzall and hit two little spots there. I slit there and I slit just a little bit there just to really just to get the bend out of the way. Let me hammer it down a little bit. So we're going to put the radiator in and see if it needs to go down anymore. And if it does, we can get to it over here. Nifty. Ah, saws all to the rescue. Look at that, huh? Almost like it was meant to fit or something. Yeah. So now we have the clearance that we need. Now she dropped right down in there. She fits like a charm. I don't know how well you can, uh... There's clearance. Plenty. Cool. Alright. Well, now that that's another issue down, I think we can actually start hooking up hoses. Jesus, man. Okay. So now we got the lower hose connected up to our cooler. We all got the lower radiator hose. Now something um, you should try to be aware of when you're tightening these is uh, try to 
angle them in a way that you can get to them later. So remember that you're gonna have a giant fan here and you have hoses and stuff in the way. So I have mine angled so I could get a deep, like a long extension socket right from here from the top. So just be mindful when you're tightening. Think about how you might be able to get to them later once everything's together in case you gotta tighten them more. So we just gotta figure out our upper adapter and uh, what to do up here because like I said before, I'm into ties. I do have the old uh, radiators laying around, like I'm talking back when I had the plastic one. Maybe I can scrounge some hardware together. Okay, so if we come over to the scrap pile, you can see that our original radiator over here actually has like a, a metal, you know, washer and a nut system holding it on. And it's, and it's flat. It's kind of embedded in there. So the, uh, the washer can actually, you know, press against that. Well, on this one, the pegs are a lot higher, so it doesn't work. You notice the, uh, there's too much play, so when that plate goes all the way down, it's not going to sandwich it. So, uh, yeah, you kind of lose points on that one, Mishimoto. You can put that down there, but it's not doing anything. It's still floating around in the breeze. How hell am I supposed to do with that? I could do it... This maybe. Well, no, you still you'd still need something to sandwich it there, and then you're you're way off your target. So what the hell? Do the newer ones use like a thick rubber bushing in there or something? Like the heck's this? What the hell am I supposed to do with that, guys? Seriously? Ugh, direct fit my ass. Okay. So here's our fix. I found some old washers laying around. I think these were from the um, the leaf spring pad bolts, the U-bolts. So I drilled this out to 5 eighths so it fits around there. And now, when we put our little dome piece on there, it'll actually hold it. No more loosey-goosey, eh? Alright. Christ. What a pain in the butt this is, huh? And before I hear you guys go, oh, you're unfair. You're not using the brackets they provided. What the hell am I supposed to do with this, huh? Uh, it's gone. It's kind of not what I need. Uh, maybe I'm missing something on the condenser end, or I'm just messing something in my head, but that can work for me. This one. Final touch. Is it really a Jeep? It's not held together by zip ties and duct tape. There you go. Now the radiator is uh, attached to the condenser, and all is good. Lovely. All right. Well, I think if we wanted to, we could put the uh, the upper support back on. Cool. Okay, wiggle the core support on. I guess if yours is okay, you're gonna have studs up here. I only got one stud left. So uh, yeah, you can slide that all in. And make sure that these holes line up. It looks like there should be clearance here, so you won't have to modify your bracket. I had to for the old one. Cool. That's nice. All right. <coughs> starting to look like something now, huh? Cool beans. What new adapter we got in here? So, this side was flared, and that's what'll actually press against the radiator when this closes. And then this one's just got a little bit of a flare on it, just to hold the, uh, the hose. It's a little hard to make something like that, but, you know, just anything. If we put the hose clamp on tight enough, it should hold, so. Okay. Damn, that's not too bad. So she's tightened on there. And the hose, you know what, it, it actually uh, caught on the other part where the uh, the old thing was, so I pushed it a little farther on, so she's doing all right. Cool. I think that should hold rather well, actually. All right. Well, I guess we can bolt this down and uh, put fans in if we wanted. Okay, so uh, we got a bit of a clearance issue with our homemade adapter over here. So we gotta bend this at like a 45 degree angle so that the air box actually has clearance that it needs to push up in there. I don't know how the hell I'm gonna bend that though. I really wish we could have had copper laying around because uh, it'd be a lot easier to bend than this stainless. Because I mean, I've got pipe bender looking thingers, but the problem is you probably wanna do that on something that's a lot shorter than that. Hmm. All right, so now we got a little bit of a bend in there cool. So I used a uh, crescent wrench on the, uh, the nut 
to um, you know keep the bending pressure off the radiator. So that's the last thing we want to do is snap that fitting off completely. And then I took the trusty Phillips, stuck it in there because it was around and about the same diameter, and used that to do the bending. Not bad. Okay, cool. Let's drop the earbox in. So now I think everything is together. Beautiful. Airbox is in. We got our uh, transmission cooler line bent so that there's actually clearance over here. All. Hands are tightened down. Everything's out of the way. So I think we just need power steering fluid because I've changed that seal, filled up with coolant. And I think she's good to start. Oh boy! Hmm. Lots of weld all up in there. Yeah, hopefully it won't leak anyway. Orange. Nifty. Okay, 50-50. Bump her in. Well, I filled it up just about as much as it would take. So, let's just do one final check. That everything is plugged in. We're a little low on power steering fluid. I'll have to go get some more. Belt's not touching anything. And it's tight. Okay. Things hooked up. Okay. Ready to see if she starts? No surprise, but maybe a little gas will help. steering pump. Come on, you can do it. God, I don't even... Come on. Come on, you can do it. It's a good boy. Well, I don't think there's any major intake leaks, otherwise the uh, RPMs would be skyrocketing. Come on, you can do it. You can be a good boy. Come on. Go check on everything. Okay, so you should expect uh, stuff to burn off the exhaust. Oh, I saw something drip off of it. I wonder what that was. Okay. The radiator is going to be thirsty though, so. I guess I still know what I'm doing after all, huh? I'm gonna keep topping up this coolant, but I think that's uh, all you need to see for now. Okay, so after running the radiator for a while, I'm still chasing down freaking leaks. So the upper radiator hose, I actually uh, cut off the uh, a little bit at the end, so that it was fresh hose. And same on this side, cut it up, push the thing in there, tighten it up. So now no more leaking on the antifreeze side. All right, lovely. Transmission a bit different. So that upper uh, adapter that we made was leaking like a son of a gun. I just had spray everywhere, dude. Real bad. It's, must be like it's under a lot of pressure or something, huh? Uh, yeah. So I'm not sure if it was the side sealing to the actual fitting over here or if it was the rubber connection. So now we've got a version two fitting that I made. This one was out of some copper I found laying around. So now we have a much better flare, and since it's copper, it should squeeze and crush to the uh, the radiator a little better. So we're gonna see how that one does, and we get a nice big long section there that we can clamp the tube to. So hopefully that lasts a little better. Bit of a tight fit in here, real pain in the butt. 
So I'll put that in there, tighten it up, and see how that does. Okay, new fitting has been installed and tightened. I tried to uh, push that thing in more, but it, it was difficult. It just, it kind of hit a point and would not go any farther. I took the whole air box, I was pushing on that thing as hard as I could. Couldn't get it to go in any deeper than that, so whatever. We're still deep enough that the hose clamp is on the other side of the um, that flare. So I cleaned up the area, and uh, I guess all we can do is drive it and see if it leaks. Doesn't really seem to uh, leak currently, just idling in the driveway. So I guess it's got to be while you're driving. I guess that puts more load or something. I don't know. Or the fluid gets hotter and then it leaks. Or I don't know, man. This stuff sucks. I kind of just want to go through and redo all the transmission lines because they're starting to leak at the factory fittings and uh, clamps and stuff like that too. So I kind of just want to redo all of it. Whatever. See how that does. But if that does it, then that does it. I was pretty happy with it. Alrighty, so time to wrap this all up with a final review. So, what do we think? Eh, not bad. Got to take it through the ringer, give her a nice old mud bath, and uh, see how she do on the trails, and uh, all that. So, good news is the new copper fitting seals perfectly. Excellent. No more leaky leaky on that end. All yeah, the quilt lines seem like they're actually holding now, which is nice. And uh, yeah, she's been fine. So with the, the fan controller that I have, it holds the temperature perfectly. It's, you know, starting to get warmer out, nice summer days. And, um, you know, it'll probably get the temperature after 15, 20 minutes um, of running. On the trails, even pushing the, the Jeep kind of hard, once the fans kick on, man, those temperatures, they, they basically just come right back down. Didn't have any trouble on the highways, no trouble on the trails no no real complaints you know so once you can get the bastard to actually fit in there and uh, everything seals properly I'd say she's good to go one of the leaks I didn't comment on was the uh, I don't know if it was actually the drain plug or the upper radiator hose but uh, the cool thing is at least with mine since I don't have any crap anywhere now I can actually get a, uh, a gear wrench up in there and tighten that down so that wins so many points that is awesome because there was no way even taking the whole grill out trying to use like you know pliers and all kinds of crap to try to take the mold styles off pain in the butt so getting a being able to get a wrench on there and just take that out that's excellent that is awesome design so i do like that a lot so i don't know if there's any kind of um other things i can do to make sure that the aluminum doesn't erode or anything like that to uh see if we can keep this thing to last as long as possible I do have a coolant filter. A lot of people don't know about that. I have an entire install video, and uh, we're going to do a follow-up. We're going to take this thing apart, cut it open, and see what it looks like after, like, 7,000 miles. Should be interesting. But, uh, yeah, so we got a filter so the thing stays clean. We're using, uh, you know, fresh coolant. So, uh, besides some interesting mystery fixes with anodes or other strange concepts like that, I think that uh, just about does it. So, hoping for the best of luck with uh, Mishimoto. Let's go!